Welcome to an episode of I have no idea what's going on, but I want to kill someone because my thread keeps breaking. I recently finished a 100 hat order using my Rakoma MT1501. It's a hat order for the Starlight Children's Foundation, which is a wonderful charity. You should check them out. I'll put information in the description below. So I was doing 100 trucker hats, or I think technically they're supposed to be called flat bill, but whatever, hats. And they're structured hats. Most of the time I've done hats that have been unstructured, like dad caps or beanies. But beanies I do in the flat. As you can see, I already have the machine set up for in the flat because I just finished 36 beanies. But one of the problems I kept running into is at some point in the design, the thread would practically shred and snap and it would do it repeatedly. And even though I was doing everything I was supposed to do to check the bobbin, maintain the machine with oil and use really good thread, it just kept having issues picking up the thread, starting again. And then sometimes it would pick up the thread and just snap right away. So what's the first thing you're gonna look at? You're gonna think, well, it's tension. Maybe my upper thread is too tight and I need to loosen it up. But then you keep loosening it and you realize that the grave knob pops off and you've gone too far. Thread breaks can actually be caused by both tension and needle size. This is something that I unfortunately found out in the process of doing the 100 hats, which is why I'm passing on this information to you. So it's important to gauge your tension and just basically start from the beginning, figure out all the settings that you need, dial things in and then you can start working and not worrying about those thread breaks. The first step is making sure you're actually putting your bobbin into the bobbin case correctly. When you put it in correctly, it basically should be rotating clockwise with the bobbin case toward the back. The other thing that you should do, which some argue is not necessary, is to use the little spring, the little piggy tail spring at the top and wind around that twice, one for each of the little spring crevices. If you have the bobbin thread going in the counterclockwise direction, it's not going to work the way that you think and all of your tension stuff is gonna be set up completely incorrectly. The second thing you need to do is a tension test. This specific kind of tension test has one thread per needle. It is a 10 millimeter wide by 40 millimeter tall satin stitch. That's all you really need. And what this is going to do is tell you if you have a correct balance for your thread, in the upper half versus the bobbin thread. As you can see here from my results, I was all kinds of wrong. And while you might think that you should touch the bobbin case tension, that's kind of the last thing that you wanna do um, because they come fairly correct from the factory and I just don't like to touch the bobbin case at all. So what this indicated to me, and this is before I tensioned things, this showed me that unfortunately, my upper thread was way too loose and you can tell because there isn't enough of the bobbin thread showing on the underside. Tensioning for an embroidery machine is completely different from a sewing machine in terms of what you expect as good results. On a sewing machine, you want to have somewhat balanced tension between your upper and your bobbin thread so that the stitching looks the same on the top as it does on the bottom, but with neither of them being super flat or showing in one direction or the other. However, on an embroidery machine, you actually want more of your upper thread to show up on the underside of what it is that you're stitching because you don't want the bobbin thread peeking through. Now, clearly I'm using a satin stitch on this that's 10 millimeters wide. So for this test, I knew that I maybe had one millimeter of bobbin thread showing on the underside versus what I would expect for 10 millimeter wide, which would be closer to four or five millimeters. You don't need to have like a ton of the bobbin thread showing, but you definitely want to make sure that your upper thread is gently wrapping and that it can 
encapsulate all of that bobbin thread and keep it to the center without it peeking up at the top side. So there's two ways that you can dial in these settings. There's the brute force way and then the easy, I like to buy gadgets just to say I spent money because I need a dopamine hit way. The brute force way of handling this is to take out your tension test and hoop two more sheets of cutaway stabilizer put it in there and just do one of the uh, little lines here uh, to test your tension and go needle by needle. So you can dial in one and do a test and continue to kind of finagle with it that way. That is absolutely the brute force way. And with 15 needles on this sucker, that is not fun. The easy way is to buy a thread gauge. A thread gauge is a little tool that you can use to measure the tension of your thread as it's passing through the needle guide. So I don't mean actually in the needle, but some of the tools will vary. So look at their instructions, but essentially you tie the thread off at the end of it and give it a little pull and you can dial in the tensions that way based on the gauge results. You can also use it on your bobbin if you wanna do that as well. I tend to start with the upper thread and very rarely touch the bobbin because that way is absolutely bonkers. So you can work with hooping two more layers of cutaway, doing the one line each time, but for one of the needles. So do it for one of your needles, figure out what that gauge looks like and what the number is coming out that produces a good result. Then you can dial all of them in the same way, measuring as you go down the needle guards here, and then do one more final stitch out of your test to verify. After you've gotten your tension correct, if you're still getting needle breaks, that's when you need to look at your needles and your needle sizes. Okay, first step, how long have you been using those needles? How many stitches have those needles put on their, you know, tippy tips? Because they wear down. These things aren't permanent. And I love the fact that we will spend thousands of dollars on material and notions and fancy scissors and gadgets, but we won't change our needles. If all else fails, change the needle because that is probably one of the reasons why it can't pick up the bobbin thread, or you might have a burr on the needle. Not all needles are flawless, and so if you do a little change out and then you get good results, it probably was just that the needle was worn down or maybe defective. However, in my case, it wasn't necessarily that the needles had gone bad or that they had worn down and needed to be replaced. I was using the wrong needle size. This is a structured cap. Because it's structured, I did not need to add additional interfacing. It has buckram on the back of it. So I really just used one thing a tear away to make sure that I had some kind of assistance in there, but otherwise I didn't use anything terribly heavy weight. But because it was already a thick twill, had the buckram and then had the tear away, a size 11 wasn't going to cut it. So let's talk about needle sizes. Typically a universal needle size for embroidery is going to be a 75 over 11. 75 being the European number and 11 being the United States number because we love to be different. But generic tools and universal things don't necessarily work for all the things. Surprise! If you use a universal needle on something super thick, it's not going to be able to punch through the fabric and pick up the bobbin thread at the same time, which is what leads to looping and the upper thread sometimes, or even just not even be able to restart the stitching. The other two well-known sizes for embroidery would be 80 over 12 or a 90 over 14 which is the one that I should have used and did swap out for toward the end. The point of going up in size is to allow for the shank to be slightly longer and also so that the needle eye is slightly longer. It can pass through thicker fabrics and then get down to the bobbin and still be able to pick up that bobbin thread and do the appropriate loop. Because if you don't have that, everything's gonna go crazy because it's not supported and you're going to hate the results. Now, if verifying that you're threading the bobbin correctly and that your upper thread tensions are right, you're using the right needle and all the other supplies that you need to embroider a certain item and you're still getting thread breaks, 
you might want to look at general maintenance for your machine. For the Recoma MT-1501, I have a few spots that require oil every time I start a session. This might not be required on a domestic that's more of like a single needle that has you know, uh, self-oiling features. So check with your manufacturer's directions on maintenance for your embroidery machine. However, in my case, when I've had multi-needles, I've needed to at least oil the bobbin case every single time I want to use the machine. And then every few days, I will drop a little bit of oil in over where the needle shanks are and where they attach because there's tiny little absorbent pads that are underneath. And that helps make sure that the piston system is gliding appropriately. You also might want to evaluate the quality of your thread. If you got something straight up from a discount store or with some very weird name that you've never heard of in the sewing biz, you might want to evaluate that. You could actually have bad thread. The other thing is, even if it is good thread, sometimes they're bad batches. I've actually experienced that with thread that was wound incorrectly, but somehow still made it out the door. And so it didn't go through the needles and the bobbin as you would expect and kind of twisted in the opposite direction and shredded. I would impress that that's actually like a really rare occurrence, but knowing me and statistical anomalies, it happens. Oh, and you also want to use a, like a rayon or a polyester thread so that they have the viscosity of being able to plow through all of these metal parts at such a high speed. This is going to be faster and more precise than anything you're going to get on a regular domestic machine, which is why you don't do cotton thread. It's not just for the shine factor with the embroidery to make it look all cool and shiny. It's also so that it can last. So that's it for helping you guys work through some thread break issues, possible tension problems with your multi-needle embroidery machines. I really hope that this helped. Please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comments below on your fun stories. I want to hear about all the fun times that you've had with thread breaks or needle breaks and had a found out session. Oh, and by found out session, I mean you messed around and you found out.